Good evening, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Holy Temple Weekly Bible Study. We thank God for uh, you and you and you. Thank God for you joining in with us um, for our weekly study. We pray that uh, you all are having a wonderful, wonderful week. We want you to know that you remain in our prayers and uh, we're praying for your continued strength and uh, for the blessings of the Lord to uh, continue to flow richly in your life. And we want you to know that Jesus loves you. We love you. Your church loves you. The people of God loves you. And you're not alone. And for the Lord promised to never leave us or forsake us. And I have come to know that he is true to his word. We're delighted that you're Amen. joining us and we appreciate your, your weekly support uh, and your attendance and your prayers for us and uh, for your comments, uh, for your prayer requests. We enjoy it all. We appreciate it and we're so thankful that you take the time to communicate with us. All of our members all across the country, uh, I want to give a special uh, commendation to our member that's the furthest away, our furthest member, Sister Kathy. Uh, we love you, we're praying for you, and we appreciate your faithful uh, tuning in on Wednesdays and on Sundays. I want to again say how tremendously thrilled I am for uh, our season members, season saints who have uh, adapted to uh, the, the change in the curve and uh, services and, and our outreach and how many of you are taking to Facebook and you're taking the conference call, you're, you're learning these new methods of social media and we just give you a thumbs up and I want to also uh, congratulate you and appreciate you for uh, uh, remaining, uh, keeping your social distance and remaining quarantined and, and staying healthy. Your health and well-being uh, is most important to us and so we thank God for all of you. Uh, before we go into the study and before we <coughs> have Emeritus Richardson <coughs> to lead us in prayer, there's a few observations I want to make. And I want to thank all of you who attended our service on Sunday, the parking lot service. Uh, the service is growing. We thank God for our new member that joined on Sunday, Brother Eugene Gardner. Welcome to the family of God. And we appreciate you allowing the Lord to lead you to join our family. But I want to say, my dears, those of you who attend the parking lot service, on Sundays. Uh, we had a very, very large crowd Sunday. And so many of you could not get on the parking lot and we understand. Some of you were a little frustrated, we understand. But I want you to know that I, I need you, my dears. You are godly people, you are saints. Please follow the directions of the parking lot attendants. They are there for our safety, and for the proper administration of the church. And so if they tell you the parking lot is full and there's nowhere else to park, then that means the parking lot is full and there's nowhere else to park. That means back your car up and park somewhere else. You just don't drive up in there um, saying you remember. Everybody that's there is a member. And so you're not the only one that's a member. So we expect you to act godly and act like you have good sense. And please, those of you who get out of your cars and sit under the tent, the chairs are placed there at social distancing and they're placed where they are for a reason. Do not get under the tent and move those chairs. If you cannot get out of your car and sit in the chairs where they're placed, I'm asking you to stay in your car, in your seat belt, uh, and then you can move your chair in your car however you want to. You can recline it. You can put it up on the dashboard. You can move it back to the back seat. 
but the seats that are under the tent that are placed there at a, at a specific distance are to remain there. Do not move those chairs. Also, I want you to keep the walking to a minimum. Uh, there's just been a little too much walking. It's, it's distractive and it's disrespectful to the pastor. You don't need to do all that walking. The staff is walking and they're walking for a reason. They have been given specific duties and that's why they're walking. But you don't need to be walking. I know sometimes you need to get out. It's an hour sitting. They need to stretch your legs, what have you. That's good. But the walking and, and please, those of you who walk, don't walk in front of the camera. Y'all see the camera there. These are elementary things. These are things that I should not have to tell grown people. Don't walk in front of the camera. That doesn't make sense. If you're pulling up into the parking lot to park, you see where the camera is, don't pull your car up in front of the camera. That makes it look like we're Andy Griffith and Barney Fife, like we don't know what we're doing. Please act like you have good sense. We're trying to I'm trying to lead you in a way of dignity and integrity and follow me in that way. Follow me as I'm leading you. Don't get all out the way and do your own thing. So please observe these, uh, these suggestions, common sense suggestions that we're making to you. And I want to say this to you, even though we're in the parking lot and we're outside, you should know how you ought to behave yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God and the pillar of the ground of the truth. You ought to know how to behave yourself. So do that. I shouldn't have to remind you of this. These are just common sense things. So do that. My dears, if you happen to get out of your car and you want to talk to people, there's, there's sanitizer there. Please come up and use the hand sanitizer. That's what it's out there for. Use the hand sanitizer. And I want you to also remember, if you're getting out of the car and you want to greet somebody, put your mask on. Put your mask on before you greet the people. <clears throat> and let's follow the rules. We're, we're saints. We're, we're believers. We're saved people. Saved people know how to obey. Saved people know how to obey, follow rules. So I want you to do this. And don't get frustrated that the church is growing and there's a lot of people there. I know there's a lot of people there. Everybody wants to get on the parking lot. Well, honey, you know, if you want to get on the parking lot, and you know church starts at 11, then you should be there at 1030. So you know you can get on the parking lot. Don't come at 1115 and get an attitude because you can't get on the parking lot. That's not good sense. If you want to be on the parking lot and you know the parking lot is full every Sunday, then you get there at 1030. Let's use some common sense. Let's do that. So don't get there late and then want to act a clown because you can't get on the parking lot. Now, I shouldn't have to remind you of these things, and so I want you to follow these instructions and be mindful. I want you to remember to continue to be faithful in your giving. I appreciate all of you that are doing so. Continue to do so. We have some projects that uh, we're, we're facing at the church. Um, those of you who have looked, uh, when you're in the parking lot, you can see on the roof, and see that um, the roofing job that was done, whenever it was done, was not really done well, and some of the shingles are coming off the roof. And so we've got to go on the roof and re do some tacking and some other things that need to be done up there. I don't have special offerings. I don't raise special offerings. I don't do all that stuff. And uh, it's a reason why I don't do it. And uh, one of the reasons why is because I trust the Lord to bless us through our obedience in paying our tithe. And uh, when we pay our tithe, uh, that provides the resources that we need to do what is necessary at the church. Uh, so there are some things that need to go on. And buildings, you're, those of you who own homes know, uh, you don't have to do nothing for something to go wrong. Pipes start leaking. AC go out, appliances go out, things happen in, with time. And so continue to do that so that we can have the resources to, resources to maintain our church 
and keep it in good order and presentation. Now the weather has changed. It's gotten hot. It's 100 degrees. And, uh, and I don't want you to be discouraged from attending the parking lot service. Uh, we're not going inside just because it's hot. It's still not safe. I understand that. And so what I'm wanting you to do, those of you who attend the parking lot service, uh, you're welcome to leave your cars running and leave your AC on. That's the reason why we have the radio broadcast. So that even though your windows are up and your air conditioner is going, you can still listen to the service on the radio. And I know some of y'all have tried it. I have saw you, you get happy and you got to jump out the car. I understand. I appreciate you, uh, Missionary Harris and others who helped the church mother. She got happy Sunday. Y'all had to go help out there in the parking. I appreciate you. I know y'all get happy and want to get out the car. But if you're not happy and, uh, and you're in your car, uh, you can roll your windows up and leave your car running and turn your AC on. The brethren have the, the system at a, at a volume pitch where we can still, you can still hear, we can still hear, and your running vehicle uh, will not be a problem. Now, if your car is one of them cars that smoke and backfire uh, and, and burning bad gas, that regular, then the brothers will come to you and they'll, not, they'll tap on your window. But, uh, and so otherwise, uh, you, you're welcome to, uh, to do that. And uh, we appreciate you. Now, I want to say this also, and then we're going to have the meritus to pray, and, and we'll go into the lesson. Uh, I want, let's be sure that we're listening to God, uh, my dears, during this time. This is very important. I want you to be sure you're listening to God, and uh, so that we do not go back into the church the same way we came out. We don't want to be in the same state of mind and spirit going back in that we were when we came out. Let's have grown, let's have matured, uh, let's have deepened our resolve and our commitment to Christ. Not to, you know, rules and dogmas and all that, but to Christ, your relationship with him. And uh, because I'm a firm believer, if people don't obey the Lord, they're not gonna obey your doctrine, your dogma, your rules or nothing else. People must love the Lord and obey the Lord and you won't have any problems out of people that love God. Let's, when it's time to go back, let's go back into our churches with a new attitude, a new spirit, a new commitment, and a new prayer life. How about that? Let's go back being better. I intend to be better, how about you? And I'm expecting God to do some great things. The Lord bless you. Um, I wanna say this also, uh, that remember, um, we're, we're going to remain in parking lot until further notice and that notice will come from the Lord when he will give me that information and when I hear from the Lord I will pass that on to you but I want to uh, I was, it was impressed upon my spirit to encourage you there are people out there that are hungry that are looking for a place to worship that are looking for the word of God you know people in your family in your community uh, in your neighborhood, on your job, that, that, that's looking for something. Invite them to be a part of your fellowship. Invite them to be a part of the conference call. Invite them to be a part of uh, the Facebook Live, the radio broadcast. Invite them to the parking lot service and let them experience the, the, this encounter with God that we experience each week. People need the Lord and they're looking for him. And I believe that they can find him at the Holy Temple family. So let's do that. And this will be, this is a part of our new norm, my dears. Uh, even after we go back in, uh, in the church, uh, we will continue this outreach medium of Facebook Live, uh, conference call, uh, even when we go back in. And uh, someone suggested it, and I think it's a good idea. And, and I think the Lord will give us that. Even when we go back in the church, we're going to make it a part of our regular schedule to at least one Sunday a month, go back out into the parking lot, at least one Sunday. And so we're gonna uh, consider that in, 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 uh, as we move forward. The Lord bless you. So please keep these observations in mind. And uh, we're ready now to, 
have our prayer from uh, our Emeritus Richardson, and then we will go into our lesson for the evening. God bless you, Emeritus. you emeritus and uh, God bless your heart uh, for that wonderful prayer the Lord bless you um, I want to say uh, I know everybody's wondering those who are looking and uh, they probably have not they're used to seeing the uh, first lady sitting next to me uh, she's behind the camera tonight because our our camera people are busy on other uh, engagements. The kids are out uh, working tonight. Uh, we have services going on. Uh, Chris is at uh, one appointment and Crystal is uh, directing a, a service uh, tonight. And so uh, the First Lady has been drafted to have to uh, run the camera. So that's where she is tonight. Uh, so let's... Uh, and say, man, y'all can do a wave or something that, to the First Lady. And the Lord bless you. Uh, as you know, the uh, I'm a little different um, in my leadership approach. And uh, uh, sometimes we, you know, the Lord leads me to teach from topics. But the majority of the time, the Lord gives me uh, something fresh. And... Uh, and so tonight, I have something fresh for you from the Lord. And uh, Sister Kiki got the announcement out to everybody from Romans, the ninth chapter. And we'll read verses 21 through 28. And uh, Romans, the ninth chapter. Uh, verses 21 through 28. And it says, Have not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if God, 
willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory, even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. As he saith also in Ose, which is Greek for Hosea, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Isaiah, or Isaiah, also crieth concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work, cut it short in righteousness, because the short work will the Lord make upon the earth. Our topic tonight that the Lord gave me to discuss uh, for just a few moments uh, is Christ completing his work in us. Christ completing his work in us. He that has begun a good work shall perform it. And when the Lord gave me this text, I thought it was very interesting how Paul, um, writing to the church at Rome, begins this chapter expressing his sorrow for the people of Israel and his great continual heaviness of heart and uh, for God's people. And he begins to express the sovereignty of God. And he begins to talk about God's relationship with his people. And I think we, we fail to realize the realm of importance as it pertains to God's relationship with us. God does not offer us religion. Let me say that, and you need to make note of that. God does not offer us religion. God offers us a relationship because he didn't say that he wanted to uh, present himself to us as our God but he wants to present himself to us as a father. And a father is not a ruler or a dictator or a boss or a lord. He is a person in kinship and relationship with his children. And I think maybe the reason why we encounter so many hindrances and roadblocks as it pertains to uh, our walk with God is because we don't embrace, we embrace religion, but we don't embrace relationship. And, and see, in religion, you don't have to get to know him. In religion, all you need to do is study to know about him. But if you're going to be in a relationship, you got to deal with him and get to know him. You have to give him the opportunity to prove and show himself to you. That's what relationship is about. And so Paul talking about relationship in reference to God and the people of Israel comes down to this 21st verse and he says, does, hath not the potter, and he talks about how, uh, you know, relationship, uh, how God uh, takes us through things, shows us compassion, he talks about we being his children. He talks about Jacob and Esau. How he, they were chosen in the womb. And each had a different path for their lives. But God was in relationship with both of them. And he comes all the way down to the 21st verse. And he says, have not the potter power? Does not the potter have the ability over the clay, over the same lump, to make one vessel unto honor, and another unto dishonor. Now, more information is given about the potter, more information is given about the clay, in Jeremiah the 18th chapter. You go there and study, you, you see about the potter. And when I was in high school, I took a class called Arts and Crafts, 
And the teacher's name was an Italian gentleman by the name of Mr. Campiotti. And in Mr. Campiotti's class, I learned about pottery and I learned about being a potter. And in that class, we were given a brick of clay, just a brick, and it was kind of stiff. And in order to work that clay, we had to add moisture to it and work it in, work in the moisture and get the moisture all in the clay to where that brick that was semi-dry became rather moist. And then we could mold it, shape it like we wanted to. And the wheel was comprised of a small wheel at the top and a large wheel at the bottom. And so we would put the clay on the small wheel on the top. And on the large wheel on the bottom, we would kick it with our feet. And that would spin the small wheel at the top. And as the wheel was spinning with our hands, we were able to mold and shape the vessel into what we wanted it to be. Paul says, has not the potter the same power over the clay to make one vessel unto honor and one unto dishonor? He talks about the, the, the difference and the distinction between Jacob and Esau earlier in the chap chapter. How Jacob was chosen for a specific purpose and Esau was chosen for a specific purpose. And how the Lord told their mother, Sarah, before they were born, he told her how uh, the younger uh, was going to be the, the leader over the older. Uh, the, the, the older son would serve the younger son. And, and Paul giving greater explanation and, and information about this incident says, doesn't God, doesn't the potter have the power to make one vessel what he wanted to be and make another vessel what he wanted to be? Had you ever thought about it? Had you ever thought about it? And y'all know I use these country analogies and y'all have to, I'm a country boy, so I have to use those analogies. You, you know, we have, we have in, 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 our, uh, in our neighborhoods, in our lives, in our home, a feline and we call it a cat. And it can be, they come in many colors. It'd be a white cat, it'd be a black cat, spotted, striped cat. But in the country, they also have uh, what's called a pole cat. And he's a cat too. And he's pretty. If you ever seen one, he's pretty. But isn't it, isn't it something how God makes one cat, the domestic cat, pretty? And, 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 he, and he smells okay. But he makes that pole cat, and he's pretty. And he don't smell too good. But they're both pretty. They're both cats. And you say, well, how did that happen? Well, the potter. He has, doesn't he have the ability to make a pretty cat that smell good? And he make another pretty cat that don't smell good. He has the power to make a vessel of honor. He has the power to make a vessel of dishonor. Now then he poses this question in verse 22 that I find very interesting. He said, now what if God, here's a poll, here's a question he's posing. Willing to demonstrate, that word show in the Greek means demonstrate, willing to demonstrate his anger to make his power known, endured with much suffering, not much long suffering. Now this is how he makes his, because God doesn't get mad right away. You need to underline that. Willing to make his wrath, his anger known. It takes God a while to get upset. Y'all ought to know it. How many times you seen people cutting up, folks acting crazy, mistreating, mistreating you, doing you bad, and look like God just let them get away with it? God enduring with much long suffering the vessels of wrath that are fitted, meaning they were made to be destroyed. But he endured them knowing that he was just going to destroy them. He made them for that purpose. And you say, well, why would God make something just to destroy it? Haven't you ever used something, got some, did you only want it temporarily? I have a friend, he always trying to build stuff and he'll go and rent, rent the tool or go buy the tool that he want. And when he get through, he go take it back, and get his money back. How many of y'all go to the store, buy an outfit? I know I'm in your business. Go buy an outfit, you want to wear it for an occasion. No, you can't afford it. 
They don't intend to keep it, but you go buy it and wear it, keep the tag on it. <laughs> I know I'm in your business. And then when you get through, you go take it off, the tag's still on it, take it back and get your money. Uh -huh, you do that. I know you do. <laughs> Some of you do it. He makes a vessel with the intent of only making it to be temporary, and then he's going to destroy it. So he makes a vessel of dishonor. It was shaped or demonstrated. He demonstrates his wrath by enduring it with it. It was only made for this purpose, that he might make known, in verse 23, the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had before prepared unto glory. You see, now I made this to this one, and I, I dealt with it, but I'm going to get rid of it. You, I didn't make that way. This one, I didn't make that way. Now, listen, let me, let me get you to understand. The people say, well, that means that God has respect to person. No, he doesn't have respect to person. That's not what that means. And does that mean that God chooses folk over other folk? And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make this point. Because we have always interpreted and defined and described Israel as being God's special people. He chose them over everybody else. Everybody tell, oh, if you bless Israel, you'll be blessed forever because those are God's chosen people. But what did he choose them for? Not chosen in the sense of how we think it, to, as though they're special and that he honors them over everybody. He chose them and gave Israel a responsibility that through them, all other nations would be blessed. And that same responsibility has he given to us the Gentiles, who are the spiritual Israel, not to make us more than anybody else, but that we have the responsibility to be the witness to the world that through us, the grace, the love, and the mercy of God should be shown. We are the people that should be the most loving. We're the people that should be the most kind. We're the people that should be the most respectful. We're the people that be, should be the mirrors that reflect the image of Christ. That's what he chose us for. Not chosen to make you somebody special. See, all of that hierarchy uh, mentality and that spirit comes from the devil. That's the Lucifer spirit that, that was in heaven that said, I want to be God like him. I want a throne. I'm special. I want to be over. That's that Lucifer spirit. God never made nobody special over anybody. He just gave you a responsibility to everybody. That's why he chose you. He gave you a responsibility. Now what God has given you, and this is the problem that I have, and this is why I'm, I'm preaching the truth, I'm crying out loud, I'm teaching the truth, and I'm trying to get people to understand. God did not make us and bless us to be lords over what he's given us, to where we're supposed to be the haves and look down our nose on the have-nots. That's not what God blessed you for. Jesus said, the poor you have with you always. Do you know why he said that? Because he wants you to know you're always going to have a responsibility to help, to feed, to clothe somebody because the poor is always going to be there. That's what he's talking about. You have a responsibility to visit the widows and to minister to people in prisons and to give clothes to those that are naked and give water to those that are thirsty. That's what the whole principle is about. He made vessels of honor so those vessels of honor could show mercy and love and kindness to the vessels of dishonor. That the mercy would be shown. Look at what he said. Verse 23 that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. The vessels of mercy, those vessels of honor, showing mercy to others. That's what the Beatitudes are about. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. God blesses you so you can bless somebody. He doesn't bless you to look down at people. He blesses you to love others, to show mercy. He's given you the resources to reach out to somebody else. 
And I've been saying, and, and I know I've gotten in trouble, and I've been saying to a lot of the, the, the religious leaders and, and my friends and what have you been telling them in this time uh, that, uh, of shortage and, and, and this time of unrest, this is not the time for leaders to be reaping. This is the time for leaders to be sowing. And if you are a leader, sin of God, this is the time for you. Just don't be worried about uh, getting, uh, getting offerings and, and appreciations and asking folks for their stimulus check. This is the time for you to be sowing back into the lives of the people. This is what God wants. He said the vessels of mercy. He wants to show his power, the power of his glory on the vessels of mercy. What is his glory? His glory is revealed when his people can love each other, help each other, and be concerned about each other. This is what the Lord wants. Now look at verse 24. Even us whom the Lord hath called, not of the Jews only, not just of the Jews, the people that everybody talking about the chosen, but of the Gentiles also, of the people that are considered the outside. God is showing his grace, his mercy, and his glory, even on the people that are considered being outside. Now watch, read what he says, verse 25. I'm rushing on. As he has said in, in O.C., as it says here in the Greek Hosea, I will call them my people, which are not my people. Look, it's right there in the book. If you want to know the, the, the scripture that he's referring to, the Greek says O.C., uh, that's Greek for Hosea. Look in Hosea chapter 2, and verse 23, this is where he said it. I will call them my people, which were not. He didn't say are not. Look at that. He didn't say are not. It's not present tense. It's past tense. Which were not my people. I'm calling them mine. We, my dad used to sing a song. They shall be mine, save the Lord. They shall be mine, save the Lord. When he comes to make up his jewelry, they shall be mine. That's where they got that song from right here. They shall be called my people that are not my people. And that's why we don't have no business pointing no finger. I, I, I say it all the time. We come up with this uh, uh, denominational thing. We put up all these walls. They don't sing like us. They don't dress like us. They don't act like us. Well, I got some. I got some brothers and sisters that don't act like me. Uh, they don't do like me, but they my brothers and sisters. And and so, does that change the fact that we family because they don't act like me, because they don't live like me? We still family. You got people in your family don't act like you. You got people don't look like you. Some of us got people in our family, we, we really, they make us want to take a DNA and see, the, boy, <laughs> y'all really? <laughs> y'all really us? This? You part of us? Yeah. We, we all have that. And, and we put up them walls. That doesn't come from God. Walls don't come from God. Divisions don't come from God. Denominations don't come from God. All that stuff will come. Unity, love, brotherly, brotherly love, brotherhood, fellowship, that comes from God. Oneness, that comes from God. He said, they, I will call them my people, which were not my people. And I want to say to you, God's got some people. They don't dress like us. They don't dress like saved folk. They may not look like us. They, they may still have a few hang-ups. And, 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 and I'm not even going to say they may. They do have some hang-ups. Because some of y'all been in the church 40 years and still got them, still hung up. And, and so uh, they have them, uh, but they're the Lord's people. And I want you to know, when Jesus came, he came to Israel. He came to his own. And according to the scripture, his own didn't receive him. And so you know what he did? He went outside of his own. His own was inside the church. His own was in the synagogue, meeting on the Sabbath and discussing the books of the law. And when he 
for whom the law, by whom the law had been written. He of whom the prophets had prophesied uh, walked in, they didn't even know him. He came to them and they didn't receive him. And so you know what he did? He said, so to them as many as believed, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. He made, the, an, made them able, gave them a provided an ability for those who were not his people to become his people. And we're in that group because we, we, we're not Israelites. We're not Jewish. We ain't got no Jewish blood in us. Well, you never know. We got so much in our blood now. I had a preacher. He's gone now. He, he was married to a lady. And he got up talking about his wife. He said, my wife, this woman I married, say she mixed up with everything. Say she got Indian in her. She got Creole in her. She got Geechee in her. He said, she got the devil in her. And boy, we just fell out of that. So we got, we got everything in us now. We got everything in us. But my point is, we were the Gentiles. And because Israel, the people, his people, to whom he had come, did not receive him. To as many as did receive him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. And I, want, and I said that to say, there's nothing new under the sun. History repeats itself. The Lord Jesus, in this time, this dispensation of grace, has come to the church, the believers, those that have been sanctified by the blood of the Lamb, and who, who were washed, their sins were washed away. But somehow or another became indoctrinated in religion and denomination. They lost their first love. And you know what he's doing? The same thing he did when he came the first time. The church don't even realize that the Lord is talking and, and that he's giving us a change of direction. And many are trying to stay where we were. I hear the, they, they're trying to get back in the We're trying to get back to the way it was. And I, when I hear all this, this chatter going on, it reminds me of Israel. When, when the Lord had led them out, sent Moses, brought them out of the Egyptian bondage by a mighty hand. He led them personally, a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, sent manna. Uh, you know, while they were out there being quarantined and they couldn't get to the restaurant, he had the heaven, the heavenly delivery service, delivering uh, the, the no contact food to them. When they woke up in the morning, the, the manna was there. No contact delivery. Y'all not with me now. And, and he fed them. And he was taking care of them while they were uh, quarantined. And, and, and he, he brought them and he, he fought the enemies and opened up the Red Sea and crossed them over. And when they got on the other side of it, they hadn't even got over their good. And Pharaoh was coming in behind them. They started talking. Oh, we, Moses got us out here. We, we ain't even got nowhere to bury ourselves. At least in Egypt, we had a cemetery. At least in Egypt, we had fish to eat. At least in Egypt, we had water to drink. Right in the presence of God's deliverance, his hand was there. And they looking back. And I listened. Oh, we trying to get back. We trying to get back. We need to have a meeting. We need to have our convention. We need to have our conference. Looking back, we ain't even got cross yet. The, the, the water ain't even closed up yet. The Red Sea ain't even closed. We barely coming through this and they're already looking back. We trying to get back. You don't even know where the Lord is taking us yet. What's the matter with you? You're not even listening to the Lord. And so since they can't recognize the Lord, you know what he's doing? He's saying, you know what? I'm here. I'm trying to show myself. These people ain't listening to me. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm raising up a people. Whoever will receive me, Whoever will believe me, you might have tattoos. You might have a long beard. You might not have no dresses in your closet. And you, you may not have, uh, you may, may have not have grown to that point to take your makeup off. You, you may have fingernails. You may have lottery tickets in your pocket. You, you might even still have cigarettes. You might even still have wine. And I'm going to deliver you from it. You just haven't got there yet. But you are the people. Is something in your heart that I can use. Something about your personality. I know you got problems. 
And, and listen, honey, I, I don't believe in throwing stuff away because it don't look good in the beginning. Can you imagine how bad off we would be if we would just throw chicken away because chicken got feathers? Have you ever seen a chicken? The first lady looking at me. If, have you ever seen a chicken before they cooked it? That booger is something else. Look at him close. Go out in the yard and get him, put him up on the table. Oh, he's dirty. That booger stank too. He got little mites on him. All them feathers. Oh, he's something else. He, he tapped the yard. A chicken is something terrible. And if you looked at him, according to how he walk around every day, you wouldn't want to have nothing to do with that booger. But oh, 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 oh. When you look down the road, and you see that booger in the skillet. My, 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 my. See, that's where y'all mess up at. If you, if you threw the fish away because of the scales and the fins on it, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. If you got rid of that catfish because of that skin on him and them whiskers on his mouth, oh, you'd be messing up. Do you know how many people, the, the, the Lord looks past all of that. And I want to talk to somebody. You, you, you trying to give your life to the Lord, but you still got scales. You still got fins. You like the chicken with your feathers. You may have mites on you. Uh, somebody want to come to the Lord, but they got tattoos on them. And they say they're going to throw me away. I'm not ready to cut my, shave my beard off. Uh, I, I, I'm not ready. I'm not comfortable yet uh, uh, not wearing pants and, and, and all these little things. And, and, and you, you say, if they're going to throw me away, they're not going to receive me. But I come to tell you, the man of God sits before you tonight to tell you, God is looking past the scales of your fish. He's looking past the tough skin of the catfish. He's looking past the feathers and the mites of the chicken. And he's seeing what's underneath. It, it, what are you saying, preacher? What I'm saying is the God we serve is looking beyond all your faults. Lord have mercy. Looking behind, beyond all your faults. And not only is he seeing your needs, what you need of him, but honey, he's seeing that there's something in you that he needs. Oh, yes, I told him Sunday, and I want you, I talked about compassion. And I said, mercy is when you touch the heart of God. But compassion is when God touches your heart. Whew. I, I, I love mercy. Mercy is when God pities us. He pities our groan. Oh, me and America sing it uh, all the time uh, uh, about he, he pities every groan. As long as I live, trouble rise, I'll hasten to his throne. That's mercy when he pities you groan. But, but, but honey, and you don't touch his heart, but when God has compassion, that means after you don't touch his heart, that, that touch in him now constrains him to touch you back. Oh, don't you want him to have compassion on you? And I'll come to tell you that the God we serve is having compassion on you. Somebody there in your lifestyle, you've been having dream and seeing yourself in the church and you saying that this can't be because I'm st I still got feathers on me. Honey, that's all right. I want you to know that God have the power of Colonel Sanders. He can pluck all them feathers and clean all the mites off of you and make you what he wants. He, what did we just talk about? Does not the potter, I'm still in my lesson, first lady. Does not the potter have the power over the chicken? I mean, over the clay to do with the clay what he want to do? Y'all stop laughing at me. Y'all know how I am. Don't look at me. I hear y'all out there. I don't be laughing at me. I'm, I'm teaching my lesson, uh, Missionary Harris. I know Missionary Harris and Mother Carter, they praying for me. They know I'm, I'm on it. All right, I'm closing. I'm, I'm bringing it on home. Now he says, uh, he, he says, I'm going to call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved, which means I'm going to betroth. I'm going to develop, I'm going to establish a relationship with somebody, with people that I didn't have one with before. Look at this. This is what God is doing in your life, ma'am, ma'am and sir. And it shall come to pass, verse 26, that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there shall, there shall they be called 
the children of the living God. In the place, look what he said. In the place where it was said to you. He told them this is personal, individual. In the place right where they said to you that you are not my people. Right there, in the church. That's why we're outside now. In the church where they said you were the people because you were not of the social class. You were not of the economic class. You're not of all those class. Well, everybody outside, now we're all of the same class. In that same place, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Isaiah also cried, verse 27, concerning Israel. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. It, the, the numbers be so great, but only a piece of it, only a piece of all those people will be saved. For he will finish, he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. This is the reason why we must hastily hear and obey the voice of God because he's finishing this work. And you know what that means when he says finishing the work? You, friend, are not going to get in the way of what God has set out to do. Don't think, and, and you that are hurt, the church hurt and, and all these other hurts, don't think that, that what people have done is going to hinder the will and the mind of God. For the scripture said, he will finish it. It ain't going to be hindered. Tell, tell somebody, it ain't going to be hindered. You ain't hindering the Lord's work. His work will not be hindered. It will not be, his plans will not be destroyed. They will not be subverted. I don't care what has happened. The Lord gave me a scripture over in Jeremiah 10 and 21. He talks about the pastors. He said, the pastors have become brutish and have not sought the Lord. He said, therefore, they will not prosper and their flocks will be scattered. Look at what's happening in our churches. How a lot of our churches are being torn up because pastors are not listening to God. They're trying to please people and please their family and all this, please politics and all this other mess. And all the members are gone, tearing up the churches. But listen, even though they tear up the church, they will not destroy the purpose of God. God will finish his work. Be encouraged. God's going to finish his work and he's going to cut it short in righteousness. His righteousness will cause him to bring an end to foolishness. His righteousness will cause him to bring an end to foolishness. And there's a whole lot of people in the church caught up in foolishness. And if you look around you, and I don't understand people, if you're looking around you and, you're, and your work isn't growing and there's no blessing there, there's no fruitfulness there, then you're caught up in foolishness. God's not there, but he's going to cut it short. Because a short work, underline it, it's in the verse, a short work, will the Lord make upon the earth. God is getting in a hurry and he's not going to play with people that are in his way. He's going to move them. Look at what's been happening. God has sent a warning. I'm going to move you. Nobody can beat God playing chess and checkers. He'll move people around. Does not the potter have the power to do what he want to do with the clay? Your status, your seniority, your role in the church means nothing to him. He's in charge, not you. You're just a lump of clay. You might be pretty. You know, you might have glitter on you. They might have put a little paint on you. They, they might put a little color in you. But, but at the bottom of all of that decoration, you're clay. And the potter has power to do what he wants to do with you. But the Lord told me to tell you, Christ is completing his work in us. My dears, give your heart to the Lord. Surrender yourself to the Lord and say, whatever I've been caught up in, if it's not your will, please forgive me and deliver me from it. I want to do your will. I want to be your vessel. I want to be a vessel of honor. Not that men honor, because honey, listen, you don't want men, uh, you don't want men's honor because the scriptures say, woe be unto you when men speak well of you. You, you. you don't need men's approval. You don't need men's validation. You want to be a, a vessel of that is honored by God. The Lord bless you, my dears. I hope this lesson has blessed your hearts. 
I try my best to stay within my time constraints. And, uh, but I want you to hear the voice of God in this word to you. Don't discourage yourself and don't allow yourself to be discouraged and don't discount yourself, my friend, because of where you've been. Where you've been does not even matter to God. It's where you're going. Paul said this, you did run well, but who hindered you? It's not how you start a race that determines the medal, but it's how you end the race. That's what matters. And to uh, the race is not given to the swift and the battle is not given to the strong, but to him that endureth to the end, it's that person the same shall be saved. Let me say a word of prayer with you. I want you to govern yourselves according to the announcements and write these scriptures down that I've shared with you. And I pray to God that, this, that this, these lessons and that this word is being a, a, a food to your soul and a source of encouragement. Father, we thank you because you're speaking to us and we're your people and you have not left us. You have not in any way deserted us or abandoned us. We thank you because you're our shepherd and we shall not want you are our Father, you are our Lord, our God. And we look to the hills in this time from which come our help. We know our help comes from you. We ask that you bless every person, every man and woman under the sound of my voice. Bless us, lift us, encourage us. Let this word take root in our hearts to understand that you're completing the work that you've begun in us. You have the power to make of us what you want us to be. And we ask, Lord, uh, that you have have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter, we are the clay. Mold us and make us after thine will. Here we are waiting, we're surrendered, and we're still. Mold us, ply us, make us, and if necessary, break us. Tear us down and mill us all over again. We want to be vessels of honor. We want to be vessels that are pleasing in your sight. And during this time of quarantine, we pray, Lord, that you give us a deeper relationship with you. Just a closer walk with thee. Grant it, Jesus, if you please. Daily walking close to thee. Oh, God, bring us closer, draw us closer and nearer to thee. Bless every person, every man, every woman under the sound of my voice. Bless our homes and and heal our sick bodies and strengthen us where we're weak. Build us up where we're torn down. Lift us and encourage us. Rebuke the spirit of depression and oppression. And I decree that there be no lack in our homes, no lack in our finances, no lack in our cupboards and our refrigerators. And I pray that the blessing of God be upon us and that you would daily load us with benefits that only come from you. Now bless your people. In the name of Jesus, and remember those who are grieving, the bereaved families, strengthen and encourage them in a special way. Remember those who are convalescing, those in hospitals and rest homes and therapeutic centers. We pray that you touch them and strengthen them, bless them, lift them and raise them up. The prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise them up. And we pray you raise them up. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Now your blessing be upon your people. We love you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, my dears on Facebook. We love you. Write me, send your comments, and we will respond. Our prayers and our love is with you in Jesus' name. God bless you all.